you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. Today we're doing intro to Italian. Now, today we're doing lesson 8.3, which is back systems of equations. We're going to be solving them using elimination, specifically addition and subtraction. We will understand how to solve systems of two linear equations in two variables, x and y, algebraically by adding and subtracting to obtain a single equation, which we will then solve. Last but not least, we're going to apply that to real world problems and situations. Now, before we can even get started solving these things, we first have to know the correct format for solving equations when we use elimination. Up to this point, when I've had you guys solve systems of <coughs> equations, I've had you guys solve them by graphing. And when we graph something, we would put it in slope-intercept form. Going forward, using elimination, there's a new form. In this form, you will not just see it here. It'll follow you all the way through college. It is known as standard form. Anybody in 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade or college can tell you that they know standard form. It's one of the most important things you learn here, so please make sure you understand very specifically what standard form is. So this is our new equation form. The old form, I'll wait till you guys write that in. The old form, slope intercept, we knew. We had the y variable on one side of the equation all alone by itself, then we had the x term, and then we had our y intercept. We use that for solving systems by graphing. Now, can anybody tell me why we don't solve every system by graphing? Anybody have an idea? Corey? Um, because graphing is, um, is graphing. Because graphing is what? Huh? <laughs> it takes longer. Graphing is time consuming. It's more prone to error. And um, what if we graphed an equation and it didn't end up on a lattice point? Let's say that we had, let's backtrack here. Let's go back to right here. Let's say that we graphed both equations and we found that the point of intersection was right here, right there. Do we know for certain what point that is? Nope. No, we don't. It does not cross through a lattice point, so we could guess. We could say that looks like it might be, I don't know, 16 and squared by 2 is maybe 17, maybe it's 5, but we don't know for certain. The good thing about elimination is that it gives us an exact answer every single time. Even if it's a fraction or a decimal, we will know the exact point on the graph where these two lines intersect. Standard form, the difference between standard form and slope intercept form is standard form is written like this. The x and y variable terms are both on the left side of the equation. And then anybody have an idea what this is over here? Constant. It's the constant. The constant, the goal when writing standard form is to get your constant all alone by itself on the right side of the equation. So when we were doing slope intercept and we were trying to get the y alone, when we're doing standard, the goal is to get the constant all alone by itself on the other side of the equation. X and Y correspond to the variables. A and B just correspond to any coefficients that happen to be there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negatives, whatever. Um, really, the goal is to get constant alone by itself on the right side, x and y terms on the left sides. And we use this for solving by elimination. You must pay very careful attention to the x and y term. Notice that the x term comes first, then the y terms. This won't always necessarily be an addition symbol, just like we always know that, was the y-intercept always a positive number? No. no, sometimes it was negative. There could be a subtraction sign here. Just know that you must have the x term, then the y term, then an equal sign, then a constant. If you have that, you've now written it in standard form. Once it's in standard form, then, and only then, can you solve using elimination. If you try to solve using elimination and you don't have both equations in standard form, you will get it wrong 100% of the time, every time, unless you get lucky and guess. Unless you get real lucky. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna practice rewriting equations in standard form. Because although later on, the problems that we solve are all in the correct form, the problems that you're gonna be doing for homework, some of them do require <coughs> rewriting. Rewriting is a great skill to have, not just for this class, but for every single algebra class and geometry class that you're gonna have going forward. Let's go to Corrigan's up. Hey bud, looking at this one right here, is this equation written in standard form? Yes sir. Yes. I want you to look at standard form right oh, here. Yeah, no, no. Okay, so what's wrong? Um, um, the x is no. Well, the x 
Oh, this is where constant, it should be. The constant's not by itself. The constant's not by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our line here. We need to get this constant along. So what needs to move, Corey? Um, the, the three? Not the three. We want the three. We want the constant, which is a three oh, on the right y. side. We want to get rid of the y. Is that a positive y or a negative y? Positive. It's positive y, Chris. I up here. So this is a positive y. What's the inverse, Chris, of a positive y? the opposite of a positive y? Negative y. So the way to move this is we subtract y from both sides. Am I going to subtract y from x? Can I do that? Can anybody tell me why I can't do that? Because they are looking for specific terminology. They have, wait, they have different variable terms? Because they're different. They are He's close, they are unlike terms. terms. They are not the same variable. So yeah, you're right. We cannot subtract x from y because they are unlike terms. All we are doing is moving this over and we write x minus y is equal to three. Is that in standard form now? Yes. 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 X term, y term, equal sign, constant. Good, check mark. That is in fact in standard form. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. What's up? Um, and in, in the x, y, is, can you still put a 1 there? You can put a 1 there. It could be 1x one minus 1y. One totally fine. And it doesn't have to be plus or minus. It can be minus, yeah. Just like, um, remember in um, slope-intercept form, it's y equals mx plus b. Was the y-intercept always a positive number? No. No, it was a negative number. Just the formula says plus, but it could be a minus. Okay. Yes? Is, like when we're <coughs> when we have these type of questions on like tests or quizzes, will we have to solve the equation once we? We will eventually get to solving. Yeah, the step by step. First, I make sure you know how to do this. Then I make sure you know the original, the first step to solve what we're looking for. Then we actually go in and solve it. Because if I just threw a question up on the board and said, "All right, watch me solve it," ba -ba 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 -ba. I solved it. You do it. Here's a worksheet. Fifty problems. You're gonna be like, uh, "I'm just gonna write this on the paper." And I'm going to take that, because you're not going to know how to do it, right? So we go step by step by step, going through the content, and then by the end, you should know how to do it so you don't have to I take the guess. L. You would guess when there's no multiple choice answers? You would just throw a random number out there? <laughs> so you have an infinite, you have one, your chance of guessing correctly is one in infinity, because there's an infinite number of possibilities for answer. Whoa. So let's pause on that. Let's actually try to work, let's pause on that. Let's try to work on solving this. Um, let's go to the next person, um, Sean Herrera. Is this in the correct one? No. Okay. We're going to draw a line because something has to move. What has to move? <coughs> the x, well, the x term has to move. The y term can stay where it is, but the x term has to move. So you have to subtract x from x? Just x? And then y. By just subtract x? I don't see an x, I see a... 2x. 2x. Again, like, yeah, subtract 2x, 2x. I subtract 2x from both sides. Am I subtracting the 2x from the y? No. I just subtract 2x, and I'm going to rewrite it. Notice I put my x term over here because my x term comes first. So it's minus 2x plus y equals negative 4. Be very careful with your positives and negatives when you do this. Don't forget to bring them down, or it will be wrong. It looks even worse. There we go. Close enough. Remember, x term first, then the y term, then the equal sign, then your constant. If you've done that, that's standard form. x term, y term, constant. If you can get this down now, when you see this over the next eight years of your life, you'll know exactly how to work it. All right. Thank you, Sean. Yama. Bottom left. I see a couple things wrong there. So it's not just going to be a one-step quick fix right here. There's a couple things we got to do to get this in the right form. What's the first step? You have to get the, um, like yeah, you gotta get, we want to get the constant. Well, we want to get the constant to the right side. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is my constant, the negative three. What would I do to move it over to the right side? Three, three, um, <coughs> well, the inverse. This is a negative three. What's the inverse of a negative three? Positive. So we're going to add three. Inverse is the most important word in this module. You're going to hear it a million times. Not just for this, but for when we solve it. So we do the inverse. The inverse of negative three is a positive three. We add three to both sides. Am I adding three to three y? No. 
No. no, I cannot do that because they are not like terms. They are unlike terms. I cannot add them together. I will just bring down my 3x. I cancel out the 3s, bring down the equal sign, 3y plus 3. Okay. Is it in standard form now? Is it? No. No. There's still one more thing that I have to do. Um, Juan Nieto, what do I have to do now? Um, if I subtract the three, you mean on the just right side of the equation. That's where it says plus three. This, if I subtract that, wouldn't I just be moving it back to the other side where it just came from? I want to have this three on the right side. Well, by itself. It's on the right side now. Okay, I got it there. I need to get rid of whatever else is on that side because I want to isolate it. So what else is on that side, on the right side of the equation, that has to go bye-bye? The three y. The three y. Is that a positive or negative 3y? Positive. Positive. What's the inverse of that? Negative 3. Negative 3y. Y. So we're going to subtract 3y from both sides. Notice that once again, I'm not subtracting 3y from 3x. I just bring it over and I rewrite it. <coughs> 3x minus 3y is equal to 3. Is that in standard form? Yes. 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 X term, y term, equal sign, constant. If you have that, you're good. If you don't, you're wrong somehow. Somehow you're wrong. Okay. On the bottom, Francesca. One more to do here before I let you guys loose to try one on your own. Francesca, what's wrong? What do I got to do first? You have to draw the line. Draw the line, okay. And then you have to add 2.7 to the constant. Yeah, I add 2.7 here, and I add it anywhere else? To the x. Not to the x. I just add it to the right side, yeah. Plus 2.7. Notice that I'm not adding it to the x. I cannot combine them. That's a constant. That's an x variable term. I'm just going to slide it over. I bring down the 0.5y. These will what? Cancel. Cancel. I bring down the equal sign, and then I have 2.7 plus 1.3x. Is that in standard form? No, it's not. Right now I have y equal sign constant x term. That's not standard form at all, not even close. Lucas is not here. So Emily, Tavares. Emily, there's one more thing left to do. Get this in the right form. What is it? What do we got to do? Move the x to the left side. Got to move the x to the left side. It's a positive 1.3x. What's the inverse of that? Subtract. I subtract. What am I subtracting? Um, 1.3x. Uh huh. From just this side? No. From the left side too. Yeah. Am I subtracting it from the y? No. No. Nope. Good job. Now I just bring everything down. 0.5y minus 1.3x equals 2.7. Is that standard form? Yes. No, really? Wait, wait. What's wrong? Oh. Yeah, they're reversed. Yeah. Remember, x term first and the y term. So a quick rewrite makes this negative 1.3x plus 0.5y equals 2.7. We're just flipping those around. Notice that the 1.3x stay negative, the 0.5y stay positive. That is standard form. X term, y term, equal sign, constant. If it helps you say that, x, y, equal, constant. That's all you need. Once they're in standard form, you can then start solving. Most of the ones, all the ones we're gonna do today together are gonna be in standard form already. Homework, some of them won't be. Questions? Questions? Very good. All right. All right, so moving on. All right, hold on. All right, so now we want to actually go in and solve some systems of equations using elimination. You know how to rewrite? Now, when we solve systems using elimination, the first and most important thing we do is eliminate one of the variables from each equation. You cannot Traditionally solve an equation that has two variables. You need to get rid of one of them. It doesn't matter if you get rid of the, y, the x's or the y's, but one of them has to go. In order to do that, 
In order to do that, we must identify whether or not either of the variables have inverse coefficients. Neither of those words are new. We know what they both mean. The question is, how does that apply to solving a system of equations? What does inverse mean? Anybody know? Inverse means the opposite, right? And the coefficient is what? What is the coefficient? It's the number that's next to the variable. So what we're looking for is to see if either the y's or the x's have inverse coefficients. So we'll look at the x's. Do they have inverse? We look at the y's. Do they have inverse? If they do, let's see what would happen here. Let's say that we have a 3x and a positive 3x. Are these inverse? No. What if we had 3x and 8x? Are these inverse? No. No, they're not. But what if I had, are they inverse now? Yes. yes. Why do you think I care about inverse coefficients? Anybody have an idea why? What happens when I have inverse coefficients? You get rid of the... What's 8 minus 8? Oh, zero. These would cancel out. Once I can cancel one of them out, I can strictly go in and solve for the other variable. Once I know what one of them is, I can then go back and solve for the other variable. So we want to look here at this first equation. I have 3x plus 2y equals 16. I have 3x minus 2y equals 32. Looking at that system of equations, do you see inverse coefficients? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Where? X's or y's? Y's. 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 You identify, the first step in solving is to identify your inverse coefficients. Once you identify them, what happens to them? Cancel. They will cancel out, and now I'm just solving for x. Chris, looking at the second equation, do you see inverse coefficients? Yes or no? Where? For what? For x. Yeah, what you don't see here, guys, is the invisible ones. I have an invisible one here, 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 and here and my x's are inverse coefficients. I have a positive one, I have a negative one, I identify my inverse coefficients. Once I identify them, what can I do? I can cancel them out. I will then solve for y, which is something that we will probably do after lunch. We're not going to lunch right now. We have like two minutes, but I'm not gonna move on to the next slide for lunch. So you guys have like two minutes to lunch to play on your phones, get some of that out of the way, and then we'll finish this when we come back from lunch. We'll just see if we can check out. Then we have some back. Really? when you go out there, man? That takes so long to turn Oh my god. Uh, I didn't know what to say. No, you will. You will. So sit there with Spanish and then you'll say, I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to Yeah. 
Nothing. It's got the lips in it. It looks like. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So now that we know how to identify inverse coefficients and eliminate them, we can actually move on to the process of solving. I've very clearly detailed the steps. If you're doing this at home, or you're doing this in classwork, or with friends, make sure you go back to this page specifically and go through the steps and how to solve. You're probably not going to remember all these until you have some practice doing these, so make sure you go through the steps one by one. Step one is to always identify the inverse coefficients and cancel them out. So, Maria, looking at the equation on the left, do you see inverse coefficients? Yes or no? Um, yes. Yeah, which ones? One. Yeah, because there's technically some invisible ones here, 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 and here. These are inverse, positive 1y, negative 1y. So what we're going to do is we are going to, now that we've identified them, what do we do with them? Cancel them out. We cancel them out. Once you cancel them out, how many of you remember how to combine like terms? Most of you, for the most part, a couple of you. Do we have like terms here and here? Yeah. How many x's do I have? Two. Step two is to combine the two equations into one equation. So we have a positive 1x and a positive 1x. That's going to give me 2x. Combine the equations. 2x, those are canceled. We bring down the equal sign. I then combine the 10 and the 14. Where do I get? 24. 24. And then once we get to this point, every single person in this room should know how to solve that one step equation. You should. Just in case you forgot, I'm going to have... Cart left, tell me how to do it. Cart left, what do I do now? You just, you you draw the line. Okay, well, actually, what we'll do is we'll stop it down here. I want to show you a step by step. So, yeah, we'll draw the line. And what are we doing? And we'll divide 2x by 2. Okay, divide 2x by 2. And 24 by 2. And 24 by 2. And when I do that, I get the answer for one half of this equation x equals 12. I have one half of the answer x is equal to 12. Now remember, we are solving a system of equations, and whenever we solve a system, our answer is always what? A coordinate pair. pair. So we know half of it. We know the x value. Now I need to go back and I need to find the y. y value. And the way I do that is very simple. I look back at the original equations. Before I canceled anything out, I had x plus y equals 10, x minus y equals 14. What I'm going to do, now that I know that x equals 12, I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into one of these equations to solve for y. The trick is, pick whichever one's easier. It doesn't matter which one you pick of the original equations. Pick whichever one is easier to work with. Which one do you guys think is easier to work with? The first one. The first one, the top one, right? Because there's no negative, so we're trying to solve for y. So we're going to take that equation, x plus y equals 10. Take it, we're going to write it there. But then we are going to substitute the value we just found, x equals 12, into this equation. That means I take this x, I get rid of it, and I substitute in the 12. So now it's 12 plus y is equal to 10. I don't know what x is now, so I just substitute it in. All I have to do to finish this up is solve for y, which is a one-step equation. Lauren Vega, how would I solve for y here? What would I do? Draw the line. Um, I wouldn't, no, uh, y is fine. All I want to do is get this y alone. So all I have to do is get rid of this. I'm trying to figure out what y is. The way I do that is I, I don't have a coefficient, so I just need to get y alone. This is a one-step equation. So I need to get rid of the positive 12. How do I get rid of the positive 12? I subtract 12 from both sides. Subtract 12, subtract 12. What happens to these 12s? Mm -hmm. so cancel out. I bring down the y. I bring down the equal sign. And then, Lauren, what is 10 minus 12? Negative 2. Negative 2. Y equals negative 2. Do I have both halves of the answer now? Yeah. Yes. I have the x and I have the y. Remember that you write the coordinate pair x comma y. My x is 12. My y is negative 2. And that's my answer. Whenever you're solving a system of equations, your answer will always be a coordinate pair. You're not just going to write x equals 12. You're not just going to write y equals negative 2. Your answer must be written as a coordinate pair. If not, then 
it's wrong. You've done something wrong. You have. Any questions on the first one? Any questions? No? Okay, so Matthew, on the right side, what's the first thing you would do? Going a little faster now. Oh, question? Okay, go. go a little faster now, Matthew. What's the first thing you want to do? Identify the inverse coefficient. Identify the inverse coefficient. Do you see them? Yes. Where? Positive 2x and negative 2x. Positive 2x, negative 2x, correct. Those are inverse coefficients. We're going to cancel those out. Once I cancel those out, count go! What do I do now? What do you mean I write the equation? Oh no, you need to combine the like terms. I combine the equation, I combine the like terms. So a positive 3y and a positive 4y, what does that become? 12, no, 7y. 7y, we're just combining, we're not multiplying, we're just combining. 3, 4, 3 plus 4 is 7y. We combine these two, positive 12, positive 16, what does that give us? 28. Good job, we combine the equations. Fiamma, yeah. what's the next step? solve that equation. So I have 7y equals 28. And how would I solve that? I divide both sides by 7 and that's going to give me the first half of the answer y equals 4. That's the first half. So I know that in my coordinate pair the y value is going to be 4. What do I have to go find now? The x value. I have to go find the x value. So Madison, how would I find the x value? I have to, what do I have to do? Subtract two. What do you mean subtract two? What did we do on the first one? What did we do here? Oh, you have to really get the, all of the original. I take one of the original equations, whichever one's the easiest one to work with, and I'm going to substitute in the value I just found in order to solve for the other variable. So which one looks like it's easier to work with? The first one. The first one. So we're going to write that equation. Give yourself space. 2x plus, that's an x. Or we can draw an x. 2x plus 3y equals 12. Right, that's the equation we're going to use. And then, what value did I just find? In the previous step, what did I find? Y equals 4, right? So be careful when you're doing this. Don't substitute 4 in for x. You have to substitute 4 in for y. y. And that's what we found. So we're going to write 2x plus 3. What's happening between the 3 and the y, guys? Multiplication. So parentheses 4 equals 12. Then you do the multiplication. 2x plus what's 3 times 4? 12. 12 is equal to 12. Now I have to solve this problem. Jennifer, what do I do to solve this? Alright. And what am I doing? sides. Subtract 12, subtract 12. I bring down the 2x. What happens to these 12s? They cancel. What happens to these 12s? Um, they also cancel, but we need something over here. So what 12 minus 12? Zero. zero. So 2x equals zero, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give me the other half of this. x is equal to zero. zero. So I have the other half of the answer, and I write that in to my coordinate pair. My answer is going to be zero comma four. That's it. What's up? When you're doing division, if you have a zero in there, what's it always going to be? Zero. 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 Do you have a question on any of these? You got it all? Just a little short on space there. Excuse me. Anybody have any questions on this? Sean, do you have any questions? You want to do both of these? You can do them on your own? Alright, alright. Chris, what's up? 3 times 4. 
Yeah, it's multiplication. It doesn't happen between the two and the one. Good question. Any other questions on this before we move on? Notice that you're first solving for one of the variables, and you go back and you solve for the other. Any questions? Any questions? No? No? All right. Hmm? Four, three, two, one. Is it a legal driving? I don't know. Is it a legal driving? Yeah. I like driving four wheelers. Anyway, excuse me. Anyway, save those questions for the end. All right. So now that was good. When we were solving, oh, you're still. Cool. All right. So you're good. So five minus seven is negative two. That goes there. You got it. All right. You're ahead. All right. Now, unfortunately, not eyes back over here. Eyes back over here. Unfortunately, not every problem will have inverse coefficients. That would be nice. Unfortunately, they all won't have them. There are instances where we must create the create the inverse. There you go. Third time's a charm. There are instances where we must create the inverse. How can we do that? How can we create the inverse? Well, to do this, I'll well, wait till you guys write that in. If we look at a system of equations and we don't see inverse coefficients, like this one down here, we have three x and five x, not even the same number. We look at the y's. Well, I have a positive 2 and a positive 2. I have, they're the same number, but they're not inverse. When I'm presented with this type of problem, I identify the variables that have the same coefficient, like these ones right here, and then I choose one of these equations, the top or the bottom, and I will multiply. How many of you know how to multiply something by negative 1? Can all, are all of us able to multiply something yes. by negative 1 in here? Yes. If I said multiply, what is negative 1 times 3? Negative 3. Negative 3. So all of you can do that. If you can multiply stuff by negative one, this is not a challenge for you. It should be straightforward. But in the instance where you are presented with the same exact coefficient, positive two and positive two, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one of those equations and you're gonna multiply every single term in that equation by negative one. Anybody know why we do that? So we get So that we can create an inverse coefficient. What happens if I multiply 2y by negative 1? Negative two. It becomes negative 2y. Did I just create my inverse? Yes. yes, I did. And then I'm able to cancel out the y's and go back to the routine of solving the problem. What's up? So you would only create the inverse for the bottom? You can create it for the top or the bottom. You can choose. If we're looking at these two equations right here, these are not the same number. So I don't worry about the x's. I look to the y's. So they're the same number, right? But they're not inverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose either the top equation or the bottom equation, and I'm going to multiply every term in there by negative 1 to create my inverse coefficient. Yes, then. Do you um, do the negative 1 to the, the constant, or no? Everything on that equation. So I'll show you how we do that in one second, but I had another question over here. No? Okay. So what you want to do, though, is you want to pick whatever equation would look easier to multiply. This one, they're all positive, so it doesn't really matter. Which one you do? What's up? And if it was a negative, it would become a positive. If it was a negative, it would become a positive, yeah. Whatever you do to a negative, if you're multiplying by negative 1, it's a positive, it becomes a negative. It's a negative, it becomes a positive. Which one of these equations do you guys want to multiply? The bottom one. The bottom one? Okay. Eyes up here, please. So we're going to take the bottom one. This is something you know how to do. We wrap it in parentheses. We put a negative 1 out here. And I'm going to multiply every term by negative 1. What's that called? It starts with a D. Distributive, distributive property. Distributive property or distribution. Either one works. Either one works. So, is anything happening to the top equation? No. Well, no. no. Stays the same. Always rewrite your system when you're doing this. So the top, equ uh, top equation will stay the same. 3x plus 2y equals 13. That does not change. Now I will multiply every single term, the x term, the y term, and the constant, by negative 1. What is negative 1 times 5x? Negative 5x. Negative 5x. Negative 5x. Negative 1 times 2y gives me? Negative 2y. Negative 2y. Negative 1 times 30 gives me? Negative 30. Negative 30. Okay. Do I have my inverse coefficients now? Yes. 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 And then I can go in and do the exact same thing we did the previous step to solve. This is the only thing that's new here. Everything else stays the same. Everything else you just did. So if you understand how to multiply by negative 1, that's about as challenging as this lesson gets. Next time, this might be a, an extra step. Um, on the next lesson, but we'll worry about that when we get there. Right now, let's focus on this. Equation on the right. Do I have inverse coefficients, Lucas, yes or no? No. That's, yeah, no. I don't. Do I have the same coefficient anywhere up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for which ones? 
Three decks. Three decks, yeah. Secondly, that's a one X, that's a one X. So, I have the same coefficient, they're not inverse. I need to multiply one of those equations by negative one. Doesn't matter. Which one do you want to multiply by negative one? One X plus two Y equals four X. Okay, so he's doing the top one. Doesn't matter which one. Whichever one looks easier for you, pick it. Negative one. The most important thing is don't just multiply that x term by negative one. Remember, it's every single term in that equation. If you don't do every single term, everything you do will be wrong. So, since we are multiplying the top equation by negative one, we'll start there. What is negative one times one x? Negative one x. Negative one x. Negative one times positive two y? Negative two y. Negative two y. And negative one times 41 gives me? Negative 41. Did the bottom equation change at all? No. No, it did not. So I will just bring it down. 1x plus 3y equals 35. Do I have my inverse coefficients now? Yes. Yes, I do. And I can go back in and do the routine of canceling out the x's there, solving for y, and then going through the whole thing. Connor, you had a question? Yeah, what happens when we don't have the same coefficients? That's next time. That's next time. I'll explain to you exactly what we do there. There's another easy procedure. You know how to multiply things by small numbers? Can you multiply something by two? Yeah. Or yeah. three? Or four? Yeah. Or negative two or negative three or negative four? Yeah. And it's not a problem for it. But we'll get there next time. It's the same process as this, except we won't be multiplying by negative one. Worry about that next time. Though. One thing at a time. Too much information, it just goes right there. What's up? He took your question, just took it away. Took it away. All right. Let's actually go and let's solve these now. Now that we know how to do this, let's solve. All right. Uh, who am I working with? Who am I working with? Call it in. Rachel Thomas. Step one, create the inverse coefficients and cancel them out. So, do you see same same coefficient up there somewhere? Yes. Where? The y's. For the y's. I have a positive one y here and a positive one y here. So, what do you have to do? You tell me. Uh, you have to create the inverse. Create the inverse, because I don't have inverse coefficients. That means that you're going to have to multiply since they're the same. One of these has to be multiplied by negative one. One of these equations. Which one do you want to do? The bottom one. The bottom one? Okay. So we're going to wrap this in parentheses and we're going to multiply this by negative one. Are we doing anything to the top equation? Yes or no? No. No. So we're just going to rewrite that as x plus 1y equals 14. Let's write out the bottom equation now. Um, Rachel, what does it become? Negative 2x. Negative two x plus negative one y. We don't do plus negative one oh, y. It just becomes yeah, negative one y, negative one y equals, equals negative twenty eight. Okay, so we've created it. Now let's cancel them out. What am I canceling out here, <clears throat> Emily Bolanos? What am I canceling out? The I'm canceling out these y's. Bang, bang, oh, done. Oh, what you got, huh? <laughs> All right, we cancel them out, and after I cancel them out. What do I do, Emily? Um, you have to combine the variables. I combine the equations into the two equations into one. So I have a positive x, positive one x, and a negative two x. What does that become? Negative one x. Negative one x. These cancel. Equals what is fourteen minus twenty eight? Minus twenty eight. Um, Please let us, yeah, let her answer it. Though. Negative fourteen. Okay. Can I end with a negative one x? Yes or no? No, I always have to have a positive variable, right? A positive x or a positive y. Mm -hmm. So I have to do what? I have to solve this. Um, Alicia, what would I do to solve this? Okay, what am I going to divide both sides by? I'm going to divide both sides by what? What's the coefficient? What's the coefficient right here? Negative, just negative one. So we're going to divide both sides by negative one, by negative one. And that's going to give me my solution. These ones will cancel. And what's my solution? X is equal to? What's negative 14 divided by negative 1 this year? 14. So X equals 14. Am I done? No. No, I have just half the answer. I have to go back and find the other half. So Viviana, Mabel, what would I do to go back and find the other half? Um, you plug it in. I don't know what plug it in is. This is a, it's not a Glade commercial. What do I do? Oh, oh. 
No, we're, we're, no, we're, 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 you're close, but we don't say plug it in. We sub, submit. Yeah. Upgrade button for you. Substitute. There you go. We substitute in. Now, this is where I want you to be careful. See this equation with the negatives? Is that an original equation? No, it's not. That's one that we changed. These are the original equations. So be very careful. That's a little caveat here. Those are your original equations. One of them looks a lot easier to work with. Which one do you want to work with? The top. Looks much easier. All right. So we're going to write the top equation. X plus Y equals 14. Looks normal. X plus Y equals 14. What did we just find? That X equals what? 14. 14. So let's write that in. We take the X, it's gone. We substituted the 14. 14 plus Y equals 14. What do I do to solve for Y? Um, you, on the left side, you subtract 14. On the left side, I subtract 14. And then you do it on the right side. And I do it on the right side as well. And. On my line, what happens to these 14s? Cancel. Cancel, and I end up with y is equal to what happens here? Zero. zero. Y is equal to zero. Now that I know both of them, I know my answer. What is my answer as a coordinate pair, Cartla? Uh, close those eyes for one second. Uh, mm, uh, what is it? What you got? What you got? Fourteen got zero. Now fill in the notes on your paper. It's not filled in over there, is it? Fourteen comma zero. That is my solution. Before you move on, how can I check that? See if that's correct. Anybody have an idea how I can check it? Mm -hmm. um, Lucas has his hand up first. So how can I check that? You could uh, uh, you could if that you could uh, put it back in a different order, like. I, know what, I think I know what you're control. trying to say, but I you can't, can't get say, it out. Like, wait, uh, okay, forget it. <laughs> it's like when you see someone about to be hit by a car, and you, you, you want to say, get out of the road, but you're like, ah! Oh. I wanted to say move, but I just said, ah! Probably scared you when you run into the car anymore. What do I do? <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I do what? I can, listen up. He's saying exactly what you're supposed to do. You can substitute this into the original equation. So my x is 14, my y is 0. If I substitute in here, what's 14 plus 0? 14. 14. If I substitute in here, what's 2 times 14? 28. 28 plus 0 is? 28. So it's a good solution. Any questions on that one? Yeah, let's try another one. Um, Alright, one more. One more. One more. Um, Sebastian, Chavez. What's the first thing I do here, man? Multiply. Oh. You're on the right track, I'm just waiting for. Okay, so what's the first thing I would do here? Well, do we have inverse coefficients, yes or no? Yeah. No. No. So that means you have to create the inverse. So what are you going to be doing to create the inverse? I'm multiply the equation by negative 1. Which one? Top or bottom? Doesn't matter. You pick. Top. Top. All right. So we're going to multiply this by negative 1. So you tell me, what am I writing down here? We're going to rewrite it. What am I going to write? The, the top one or the bottom one? Well, you start with the top because you start with the top. So it's negative 3 and Negative 3x. Minus 2y. Minus 2y equals? Negative 3. Negative 3. And this one, is it changing at all? No. So we'll just bring that one down. That's going to be 4x plus 2y equals 7. Once I have those, what is the next thing i got to do? I'll leave. So once you find the... Step 2. Combine the two equations into one equation. Good. Let's combine it. Negative 3x, positive 4x. What do I get? Um, 1. 1x or just x. What happens to the y's? They cancel out. So they're done. And negative 3 and 7 become 4. four. So x equals 4. I have solved for one half of the problem. I solved for one half. Now that I know that half of the answer, we go to Connor James. Connor. Connor. And the other x equals four. 
<laughs> Let's go back and make sure we're working with just the original equations now. Which one do you want to work with, top to bottom? Oh. Top. We're going to have to take this value, substitute it back in. Let's write the top equation, 3x plus 2y equals 3. Now, well, because I already did it. I combined them. It just so happened that when I combined them, everything else canceled out. To solve four. So, Connor, I know that x equals 4. We need to substitute it into this equation, right? So, you tell me what am I going to write? 3. 3. Parentheses, four. four. Um, that's going to equal, oh, plus two y equals three. Plus two y equals three, okay. That's going to be 12 plus two y equals three. 12 plus two y equals three. And then, you're on the right track, don't worry. Um, For those of you working ahead, don't be concerned, you're on the right track. Don't be concerned because you got a fraction. What do I do? Step equation. Oh, got to yeah. isolate the variable term. You, uh, subtract 12 from both sides. Yeah, subtract 12 from both sides, and I'll have 2y is equal to what, Connor? Negative 2. Negative 9. 9. Negative 9. I then will divide, I'll write it over here, 2y equals negative 9. I divide both sides by what? 2. 2, and I end up with y is going to be equal to a fraction. y is equal to negative 9 over 2. That's a 2 there, by the way. Because you can't see it, that is a 2. Poorly drawn, but that is a 2. It also got hit by a car. <laughs> All right? Don't write it as a decimal, leave it as a fraction. So we are going to write our solution set right now. And Shimon, what's the solution set? Oh, you have a question? What's up? Oh, you're right. Oh, it's, it's. Where did I get the one? You can put it in the middle, you can make it negative 9, 2, you can make it right in the middle, whatever works for you. As long as only one of them is negative. And then my solution set is going to be what, Shemal? What's my coordinate pair going to be for the solution? It's not going to be x, comma. We have two numbers. My, coordinate, my solution will always be a coordinate pair. It will be a number, comma, a number. Oh, 4, comma, negative 9. 4, comma, negative 9 over 2. And how can you check that answer, Rudy? How can I, how can I check that? Um, you oh, substitute the, the... I substitute these into the original equation to see if I get a, what type of statement? True, true, true statement. statement. If I do, then it's a good Solution. There we go. People still don't want to wait for holiday break. Okay. Any questions here? Any questions? All right. All right. So, last but not least, word problems. Now, you see word problems, you're like, no. Ah. No. No. Word problems. Ah. There's nothing new, man. The only difference is the systems are not written for you. But using hard. just a little bit of effort, <laughs> if only I can get a half the effort that you guys put into some of those games on your phones, this would be easy. Like, yo, but those are fun. This is not? Absolutely not. That's the difference. That's why I like my phone and math. I'm like, you know, YouTube? Okay. See, Rose, you told me to get Steve. I'm getting it right now, bro. Anyway, um, I'm going to have Fiamma. That for me. Okay. At the country fair, the <laughs> 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 okay. At the country fair, the Baxter family bought six hot dogs and four juice drinks for twelve dollars. The Farley family bought three hot dogs and four juice drinks for nine dollars. Find the price of a hot dog and the price of a juice drink. Okay, so we got the Baxter family, we got the Farley family. Sounds like family feud. <laughs> All right. So what we're being asked to do is we're being asked, remember, it's always the last sentence. We need to find the price of a hot dog and the price of a juice drink. The only thing that you really have to do here is you have to assign variables to this problem. So we're talking about what? Hot dogs and juice drinks. So I'm going to let my hot dogs, now when we're using system of equations, we always work with what two variables? X and Y. 
So I'm going to say, well, hot dog shows up first in the problem. Let's make that X. Why not? Juice comes second. Let's make that Y. And once I have that information, I think it's pretty easy for me to go in and write the system. Looking at the Baxter family, can you, Sean Herrera, write an equation for the Baxter family? Now that I've defined the variables for you. What's the Baxter family? First sentence, yeah. Um, 6x. 6x. And 4y. Plus 4y. Equals twelve dollars, or it's a whole number. It's a whole dollar amount. We can just write twelve, right? Twelve point zero zero same as twelve. So we'll write that. Good job. That's my Baxter family. Now that I got the Baxter family out the way, let me just call them going. Let me give you one for reading. Juan Nieto. Can I write an equation for the Farley family? Three um, x. Three x. Okay. Plus four y. Plus four y. Equals nine. Equals nine. Was that that hard? Yeah. No, it really was not. As the only thing that's different here is you are defining variables. I have hot dogs, okay, that's my X. I have two strings, that's my Y. And once we get here, then it's something you already know how to do. Do I have inverse coefficients, yes or no? No. No, so what would I have to do here? Make one. Make I would have to make one, I'd have to create the inverse. I would then go in and solve this problem. We're not gonna solve it. You guys already know how to do this. All I care about is that you guys know how to write a system, given a word problem. If you want to solve this, I and mean, you could probably use a little deductive reasoning to solve this, anybody have an answer? Anybody can go in and work ahead and solve this? No? I need a coordinate pair. What do you got? 1 comma 1.5. 1 comma 1.5, let's see if that works for both of them. That's six, that's six, that makes 12, that's three plus Six makes nine, yeah, one comma 1.5, that works. One comma 1.5 will work. If you don't believe me, go in and solve it for yourself. You will see that you get one comma 1.5, no, or it might come out as a fraction, right? One comma one and a half? What was it? What was the fraction when you got it? Oh, I just simplified it right now. You simplified here? Okay, well, hey, that's fine. So one comma 1.5, but I guess that makes sense because we're talking about dollars and cents. We want to know the price, right? The price of a hot dog, my X value is one dollar. The price of a juice drink would be one dollar fifty. That sounds like our vending machines out there. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. no juice drink, but four dollars. <laughs> All right, next one. Let's see who can walk me through this. Hey, in Alaska, how you doing today? Kind of quiet. Oh my God, that's a book bag. I thought that was her. Corey Gonzalez. First step: to find the variable. So. What do you want donuts to be? I'm already doing it. Oh, okay. So what are your donuts then? Um, I put X. X and your coffee would be? Uh, y. Y, okay. And then I want you to tell me what the equation would be for Mackel. What is Mackel's equation? 7X plus 2Y equals 16. 7X plus 2Y equals 16. Good job. And cart left. Oh, wait. I just pulled your card back again. Sorry. Mr. Mota. What's the equation for Ashley? 3x plus 2y equals 8. 3x plus 2y equals 8. And if you're looking at this and you have good deductive reasoning, you should realize that we don't have an inverse, so we have to create, create it. Probably easier to do this one. Go in and solve it. I'm going to say, looking at this, that it's going to be $2 for donuts, $1 for coffee. Is that what you're sure how to use it. <laughs> it's, like, right. it's like you're guessing. No, but look, no, I mean, it works, seven right? 7 times 2 is 14. Plus 2 equals 14. Plus, uh, 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 that equal equals 16. Yeah, that equals 16. And then 3 times Where did you come from? Plus 2 six times 14. Well, you're so cheating somehow. You of course I'm cheating. I wrote the problem. You you so oh. Yeah. I should know the answer because I wrote the problem. The most obvious answer. Answer, right? I thought you found it somewhere. Well, no, I write all of this stuff myself. I wrote this, it was like 450 this morning when I wrote it. No, 450? 450? Yeah, I get up at four. I get up at four. Why? Because, I, because I go home, I don't do this when I go home. I go home, I phone my child, 
play with my baby, we high five, we play with some toys, I read her some books, she takes the book, takes it in your head every day, and goes, <laughs> So that's my fun time. I eat dinner, I watch a little TV, a little sports center, go to sleep. And then, I get up like four, and I do my work when it's nice, it's peaceful, it's quiet. Baby goes to sleep, no one's in the house, coffee oh, pot goes on. No, it's peaceful, it's quiet. Wait till you get older, and you well, have a family, and you, have a kid, <laughs> and you want some minutes of peace and quiet in your life, that's the best time, because only the crazy people are up at four in the morning. Right there. No questions?